What's going on guys? Hit pause here with a quick summary of the tutorial where we learn how to uh, register headshots and uh, blow off a character's head with decapitation. Uh, so I'm just going to run through it as quickly basically as possible. The projectile itself on component hit needs to break the hit result so that way we can retrieve the bone name that was hit. We check does it equal head and we use that in a select float. So if it's true we use A so it does equal the headshot. So we multiply damage by 100. Uh, and then we apply damage like normal. Again, we want to make sure we destroy the actor here, and we only want to we only care if it uh, if what we hit casts to character. If it doesn't cast a character, just go ahead and destroy the actor. I don't really need to cast a projectile. I believe at this point I was doing it so that I could. Um, uh, I don't I don't know why I actually cast it there. It was actually pretty pointless. Uh, just as a quick reminder, we are ignoring ourselves. Uh, right here when we um, fire it so we ignore the instigator which would be the character so we don't end up shooting ourselves. so uh, we're not actually telling the player that uh, we are um, get, uh, retrieving a headshot the only indication of that is by how much damage the player receives so what we do here is when we on the event any damage here we just run a sequence and we check first does, does the damage exactly equal 100? And that the only case for that in, in our situation here is uh, when the damage is 100, it equals a headshot. So if that's true, we first spawn an emitter. Now I changed this. This was originally in the original video plugged in here after the sequence, but what, what was happening was we were getting an explosion at his head even if you shot him in the feet because coming out of here uh, ignores this branch. So we need this to be part of the branch, okay? So we spawn the emitter only if it's a headshot now. Okay, and then all we do is we add a destructible component. Uh, we set the destructible mesh and we apply damage to it, okay? Uh, we want to make sure that we do spawn it at the head bone location, okay, so that it matches up. I did export the head mesh to align to the um, head bone when, when uh, socketed to it. Um, because this is a component, it will exist inside of this actor, so we use the transform space actor here and we, we need to break it so we can get location for the apply damage. It, apply damage does require hit location in the impulse direction. So I just said a uh, 1 in the Z so that the impulse direction was straight up in world space and the location would be at the same spot as the bone and I gave it a little bit of strength here so that it actually kicks the pieces upward. Uh, and then after that we immediately hide the bone by name, which it, all this does is just scales the bone to zero, okay, which will take any geometry with it down to zero. Uh, immediately following that, we actually handle the health, regardless of whether or not it was a headshot. You can see that this comes separately before or, or outside of the notion of it being a headshot. Uh, we decrement the amount of health by how much is damage, okay, how much the damage is. We do have that plugged in here down this green line. So health minus damage, and then we set health. If health is less than or equal to zero, we die, which means set simulate physics, uh, set lifespan immediately following that. So set lifespan is essentially the same thing as just adding a delay and then destroy actor. And it will also destroy the destructible component because this is nested in this actor, okay, it is a component of this actor. Actor. So it's destroying the entire actor and everything that goes with it. The one thing that is not part of this actor will be the emitter. Uh, the reason is is because it is actually spawned, okay, uh, is not given an owner or we don't set an owner on it or anything like that. The emitter actually is just an explosion, so it will govern its own lifetime. As soon as it is uh, as soon as it's finished emitting and all the particles have faded out, it will destroy itself. So I don't need to worry about that. This code up here is actually the same thing as spawning the destructible mesh. The only difference is, is we're just doing a static mesh. So this is for if you wanted the head to pop off but stay whole. Okay, and we use essentially this the same method here. We get the actor space for the the head here to find the uh, transform. We spawn a static mesh. We um, we then hide the bone. Okay, uh, then we set the static mesh and then we set simulate physics to it and then we add an impulse. So the head pops off, but it, uh, again it will stay whole. If you wanted to randomize whether or not it um, stays whole or or uh, can be destructible so that it, it crumbles into little pieces. You could easily just put a random branch right here between these two right right after this guy. You could say, okay, you know, randomly go here or here and, and, and you'll get either or. Um, it was very important uh, to note that uh, when you do hide the bone by name, it does scale the bone to zero. So if you were to spawn this static mesh after you hide the bone and scale it down to zero, the scale here 
uh, will actually be zero so your static mesh component will appear not to show up it is in fact showing up it's just scaled to zero which gives it no space and uh, you won't see anything okay so uh, it's very important that this come uh, in in the correct location of the chain okay you'll notice here I did it at the very end you'll notice here that it was only important that it happens after we add the static mesh component because again we are using its transform which does include um, location rotation and scale so if the scale is zero 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 here and we spawn and we spawn this its scale will be the same hopefully that that makes sense and that's that's really all there is to it uh, I did have to add some additional collision channels on the projectile so the sphere is set to projectile the third person characters um, actual capsule is set to a new channel called capsule that way the capsule can ignore projectiles and the projectiles can ignore the capsule that way we don't bounce our bullets off of these guys' uh, collision cylinders in fact it goes through that and collides with the mesh itself and, and we need that for this so I used specific uh, channels for that so if I demo it really quick boom 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 down the line and there we go heads are blowing off so that's it that's as quick as I can explain it if you guys uh, need further explanation there's obviously an hour-long tutorial where I actually go through and do it uh, and if you need anything else just go ahead and uh, put the questions in the comments and I will get to them as quick as I can thanks for watching this hit pause sign off